As a dietitian, I get asked a lot, are granola bars healthy? And how can I find a good granola bar? So today we are going to be talking about granola bars on National Granola Bar Day. You know, if it was 15 weeks later. I'm going to be sharing why granola bars can still be a good idea, how to find good granola bars, and my top five granola bar choices. And if you like content like this, please remember to like and subscribe for more. So are granola bars healthy? Well, the short answer is they can be, but a lot of them aren't. The main concern is that they have a lot of added sugar. They have a lot of refined carbohydrates, wherein they have absolutely no fiber. They're very low in protein. And also they can contain high saturated fats from undesirable ingredients. And they can contain quite a bit of additives. But if you pick the good ones, you can actually benefit from the convenience that a granola bar brings. For example, they're portable, they are pre-portioned, they are way less hassle than any other snack. You don't have to wash anything, you don't have to prep anything in advance, you just kind of grab and go, and you don't really have to wash your hands, although you probably should. And you can benefit from a slower digesting, high fiber carbohydrate source, you can benefit from a fair amount of protein. Altogether, a good granola bar can be an awesome snack to have, that can keep hunger at bay while you're going through your day and keep you full and satiated until your next meal. Let me tell you guys what you should be looking out for when you're looking at a granola bar nutrition facts table. This will help you to find the best granola bar available. And if you need a quick refresher or you need to learn how to read a nutrition facts table, feel free to check out my video right over here. So for a good or a better choice of granola bar, you're gonna want to look for eight grams or less of sugar, four grams or more of fiber, and five grams or more of protein. Many people are also concerned about additives, and I do agree on the whole, we should be looking out for less additives and more whole food ingredients, but there are some very helpful additives that do serve a purpose. In my top five granola bar choices, I'm gonna be explaining a few, so stick around. Now with these sugar, fiber, and protein guidelines, they are exactly that, they are guidelines. So again, if you'd have a limited availability of these granola bar products, then choose the one that's the best. If let's say you have option one granola bar that has low sugar, high fiber, but also low protein, but you have number two where it's very high protein, but very high sugar as well, then I would opt for choice number one. So in no particular order, here are my top five choices for granola bars. Number one, the Cashy Dark Mocha Almond Chewy Whole Grain Granola Bars. Despite the long name, it's coming in at around 5% saturated fat per bar, which is a low amount of saturated fat. It has about four grams of fiber per bar, which is coming in at the highest of all the cashew bars. It has about seven grams of sugar, fairly on the lower side, um, but also definitely the lowest out of all the cashew bars, and also three grams of protein, which is the highest out of all cashew bars, but overall um, still a little bit lower. It also does have a pretty good ingredients list with mostly whole ingredients. It does have items such as brown rice syrup, vegetable glycerin, and also oat hull fiber, which I would assume is where some of the fiber comes from. But overall, that's a pretty good ingredients list. And number two is the Lara Bar, specifically Lara Bar peanut butter. Now this bar does have a slightly higher saturated fat content, but it's still a fair amount and they are from natural ingredients as you'll see in a little bit here. There is a good source of fiber containing four grams. It also is a high source of protein because it contains seven grams of protein per bar. And it's only made from three ingredients, dates, peanuts, and sea salt. The only caveat is that the higher content is higher. It's about 16 grams, but there are no additional additives or added sugar. It's simply from the dates. Number three are the kind bars. Now this time I did not specify out any specific flavor because the kind bars, they all have a pretty similar nutritional content. They're all within the ranges of five to seven grams of fiber, five to six grams of sugar, and five to seven grams of protein. They do have a higher saturated fat content compared to other bars and just a higher fat content overall. But if you look at the ingredients list, they are mostly from heart healthy fats and whole food sources, such as almonds, cashews, and peanuts. They do have something called chicory root fiber, and this is probably where, again, some of the fiber does come from. 
And chicory root fiber is a plant-based source of fiber that's an additive in a lot of different products to increase their fiber content. One caveat about this particular type of fiber is that for some individuals, especially those with IBS, it could trigger some more gastrointestinal discomfort. But this does not mean that you need to avoid it per se, you just need to test your own tolerance to it. So number four is the good to go bar. Similar to the kind bars, the nutritional contents of all of the good to go bars are pretty similar. Their saturated fat content is 5%, which is low. They have a fiber of seven grams, sugar of two grams and protein of five grams. Again, they have a pretty simple ingredients list. The two main additives here are inulin, which is basically the chicory root fiber that you saw from the kind bars and also erythritol. Now, erythritol is part of a family called sugar alcohols, which is a type of sweetener that does not affect blood sugar, but they're not necessarily the same as something like a Splenda. The main side effect of having too much sugar alcohols, especially in some individuals, is that it can cause some looser bowel movements, uh, but erythritol is one of those that is more tolerated by people. So also please note that according to the packaging and also to their website, this is a certified keto product, but this is not the reason why I placed it in my top five granola bar choices. I basically went with the nutritional info as well as the ingredients list. And number five, last but not least, it is the PC Blue Menu Oatmeal and Peanut Butter Bar. This bar again has a slightly higher saturated fat content, and this comes from the variety of nut butters that are in this bar, in addition to coconuts, coconut oil, and a variety of seeds. It has eight grams of fiber, four grams of sugar, and four grams of protein. And it mostly does contain whole ingredients. Some of the more notable additives include the fructo oligosaccharides, which does have a sweet taste and also contributes fiber content, the inulin, which you have seen from a couple previous granola bars, and also the glycerin, which contributes also a sweet taste and it has a moisturizing property. And you will find if you try this bar that it is quite soft and quite moist. Now, even though these are my top five granola bar choices, I want you guys to know that this is that you don't have to follow this to a T every single time you pick a granola bar. It's not about eating perfectly. It's not about following my or another dietitian's recommendations to a T. It's really about the overall picture. If you are having balanced meals from the day to day, and you know, those Nature Valley sweet and salty bars, which is honestly one of my favorite bars, are your favorite as well, then have one. On the other hand, if you are not quite there yet with having balanced meals from the day to day, then picking a better granola bar may not be the key in developing those healthy eating habits, but it can certainly be the first step. Remember, small steps can lead to big changes. Because you're searching for a better granola bar, you are actually learning how to read the nutrition facts table. And a small step like this could certainly push you to seek out and develop other positive eating habits. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you really enjoyed this video. And please let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below.